I don't have the mic, the right mic on. I do. All right, which team's gonna win? Whoa. Oh. Oh, it's me. Whoa. How's Hello? it going? Hello? Oh. We're just awkwardly pausing. Hello, yeah, welcome we to Prison Draft League, everybody. It is me, DBZ Freak 2. And on my other side, I have Dino Fritz. We're here bringing you the draft of the first first game of the night, is it? Is this the first week of draft or is this the second week of draft? Draft. Someone help me. Uh, this I don't is know the first, it's the first week. It's the first week. Cool. First week of draft. We are immediately in a picks and bands with these two teams. Update stream package. And I already forgot the other team's name as I'm going to look it up right now. Do not judge me. Uh, it's okay. But, uh, they're both weird names anyway. Yeah. Basically, team our blue team here is going to be uh, Matt's team. Uh, if you don't know Matt, he's a real character. Uh, and on the other side is Cole's team. And I don't know Cole. I don't know, but I've heard he's just as much of a character as Matt. I agree. And so far, we're already halfway. Much, we're all the way done with the ban phase. Currently, we have Anivia, Victor, Tristana being banned on the blue side, followed by Evelyn, Samira, and Zach on the other. So, I pretty standard bands, I think. Not really, like, anything, like, heavily hitting in the meta except the Victor. You have the Tristana, which is a really good, like, strong pick into pretty much anything, whether it's in the mid lane or in the bot lane. She's really strong carry. Now, what do we have first? We have the Instalock on Cassin and first, who, if depending on how this game goes, Haru will be the one to pilot to this Cassowin. And we have Wukong locked in on the other side, which is really good setup potential for uh, e uh, EOD. What the heck? I feel like that abbreviation is wrong. Nope, that is correct, according to the document. All right, then. Just leave it alone. And, uh, uh, I, I know, right? And then Yoni yeah, following up. Okay, I like I like where this is going so far. What are you, what are you liking about this draft right now? I mean, uh, EOD, uh, red team here, is just kind of... Uh, I, I like the death ball. You just kind of just AFK all your entire team, all clicks forward, and you just blow them up. Uh, it doesn't work too well into Cassidy because it's a Cassidy. Uh, but in general, I like the comp idea. Uh, I'm not surprised by this Lucian pick either, because Lucian is still busted. busted. And especially with the ADC item changes that just happened this patch, uh, he should be doing fairly well um, okay. with going like IE or Navori Quick Blade second. Wow, and they're even going to complete the whole Lucian Nami nonsense that's been strong for probably about half a year now, I would think, because Lucian Nami is just... 
does a lot it's... more damage. Even, even though they've nerfed Nami, the, the, the still the amount of damage they can get off of each other is still really, really strong. So I'm expecting the first strike on the Lucian, and I think followed up with the Airy on the Nami, since Electrocute doesn't probably get used to anymore. Karma uh, being the final pick here for EOD on the path of the draft, and now we have a Lowey Band coming in first. Uh, I think now Upon Light does pilot that. Oh yes, he does. Now Upon Light does pilot the um the Alawi. and we have follow up with the Varus band. So yeah, taking away some of those utility eighty carries in, as Varus and Karma do work very well together with the amount of poke that they can provide. Same thing. I mean, you, they they just kind of telegraph their whole bot lane already. And it's like now that we don't know where theirs is, we can take off some of these other strong eighty carries and just like pinch the pool a little bit. And here we go again. Aatrox being banned as well. All right, so I'm gonna pick your brain for a little bit if you don't mind. Okay. Sure, go right ahead. So we see what they're telegraphing on the side of USP and EOD. What are you expecting here for the finishing up the ball lane on EOD and then maybe even a top lane pick for uh, USP? So they're most likely going to go for uh, a poke lane to try and get some priority in this bot lane. Um, as well as, uh, I'm, I'm expecting Yone to go mid, uh, so that's already a winning matchup for the Kasten. Mm -hmm. So then they're going to first pick ADC, go for the Caitlyn, like I said, a poke lane to get priority, and then hopefully an aggressive top lane. Uh, and just kind of go for this early to mid game uh, power spike where it doesn't matter basically at any state. As long as they hit their first item, they can just, again, push, push all their buttons, AFK yeah. walk in, and then just kind of kill them all. Oh, uh, yeah, supported but... by this Karma and then just the Yone Wukong Wombo Combo. Yeah, disgusting. So, uh, looks like we have a Caitlyn being first picked up here. We have Cassante as the response on the other side, who uh, you and I know that that champion is pretty broken. So, the fact of him getting locked in is nuts. And, like, what do you never there, there actually a seen a more balanced champion in the top? Playing the Cassante, of course. So there are a couple counter picks that EOD can pick with, but we're gonna focus on. Looks like it's the jungler that has left to be picked. So there are some options left to open. There's Sejuani. Uh, never mind, Zach was banned. And um, Ooh. Um, uh, okay, so it's it, it is a Cassante jungle. jungle. Yeah, it's Cassante jungle. Um, now I'm I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how that goes. So it looks like what Ari Ari midcast top Kasante jungle, uh, Shinami, yeah, and they're they're kind of playing to scale. Uh, Lucian Nami kind of plays well whenever Ari playing for picks. I uh, I don't know how they're gonna play these team fights when they happen. Uh, but hopefully they they just get the gold lead enough from Ari and Lucian Nami to, uh counteract this game plan that EOD has. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. Well, we're going to have to wait and see where exactly who is going where. There is a very wild but very unlikely case that, you know, Kassadin could be in the jungle, but the fact that, like, oh, not Wukong, but Kassadin is absolutely worthless until he actually gets some items and gets level 11, then, like, I mean, hey, we'll take that. So, in the meantime, um, I guess... It kind of throws off like what I was thinking about what they're going to do like in terms of like objective control because I like to think a lot about like objective control in these types of games like what do they think what are they, what's the game plan what are they going to do and you were saying that they were going to pick uh, on the other side pick a bot lane to get some priority to be able to get those objectives and based off what I'm seeing is that uh, satisfied ah I mean maybe EOD doesn't get as much priority as they think since you know the Ezreal and the Varus were banned and that goes heavily in favor of the side of USP. I just can't get over this potential Cassante jungle. I'm just yeah. like, so, so as far as priority goes, Caitlyn Karma should get early push and priority in the lane. And with that, if the Lucian Nami is able to bounce back, it can be fine. But it, it can be a very hard lane to win just because they are so aggressive. And then Wukong jungle is Wukong jungle. Uh, if you've had it in any of your solo key games, you know it, it starts snowballing fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it it just becomes a menace, uh, even off just the single sheen component. It, it it's, it's hard to keep up with clear speed or the combat stats he has. Um, yeah. So he, that's going to be it. That looks to be the main priority while letting the Cho'Gath scale up uh, into the Kassadin. That lane is kind of a free Kassadin lane. Kassadin shouldn't be dying and just gets a chance to scale up. That could yeah. go either way. Uh, Wukong has a chance to impact it, but he shouldn't be playing around that lane. I agree with you on that one. Just wild stuff, huh? Um, 
we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens on this one. I'm looking forward to where this could potentially go. Uh, we're we're getting some uh, some things situated in the meantime. Uh, I'm curious what runes are gonna be taking over the course of the game, but we won't know until they load into game. So it's gonna be a second because we're currently going through drafting client, and then we have spectator delay. You know, all that fun stuff that has to happen because we don't get the super special tournament nonsense that they do in pro play because we're not cool enough. Give it to no. us, right, teams? No, uh, unfortunately, we aren't cool enough. Uh, but it does look like our uh, analyst and host was ready to kind of take this over and uh, give us their thoughts on this draft. Uh, so, Bickle, Gollum, uh, it is over to you guys. How you guys doing tonight, everybody? Uh, sorry about the slight delays. We've had a little bit of issues going on here and there. My power keeps going on in and out, so that's a wonderful situation to be in. And uh, Gollum here can't get his camera to be going. So how are you doing tonight, Gollum? I may be riding solo on this, as I am not hearing Gollum at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the draft that we saw coming through. We did see the early pickup of the cast and become a very strong prio champion. Ever since the changes to Rod of Ages, really a strong champion. And just such a hyperscaling late game champion just further benefits and becomes even tankier with the Seraph's changes, with the Rod changes, the chain, the uh, back. Sorry. buffs Hi. that nurse that came in. Okay, you're all welcome back. The nurse that came in for Cassidy on that B patch weren't enough to take him down a level, only reducing that cooldown of his E late game isn't going to do much for him when the fact that he gets that automatic cooldown reduction from Bells being cast around him. What do you think of this draft overall, though, Golden? Overall, just looking at it, you look at the left-hand side and you see four champions. Count them. Four champions with the dash. And you see no Talia on the red side at all. You have a Lucian, you have an Ari, you have a Cassante, you have a Kassan. They all rely on their dashes to either get to the back line, get to their priority targets. And there is none. That Caitlyn will not be having a fun time this game. We're going to be seeing her die a lot in team fights if Blue Side's able to actually pick up what they should be putting down for those for their champ pool and for what they want to accomplish here. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for deadly dashes all the time, yeah. every time. What do you? Fair I mean, enough for for all around the LS loves to say what's the beatdown, right? So you look at you look at Red Side and they do have the beatdown of the Caitlyn, but like why the Cho'Gath? Why would you go and pick Cho'Gath and the Cassante? Have you seen this before? Uh, Cho'Gath and Cassante, not particularly. Cassante overall, still a very strong bruiser, tank, damage assassin, whatever you want to call him, top side. As he can do it all once he goes all out. Obviously, he's getting hurt, hit with some nerfs next patch. Though right now, absolutely oppressive. Probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest top landers right now. Cho'Gath is just not going to have a fun time. I know that on the side of EOD, I believe their top laner is a recent roll swap, so may not have the biggest of champ pool at the moment. Really, they're going to be looking at both this Caitlyn and the Yon to be their massive damage dealers. Caitlyn going to try and get this heavy lane prio with the Karma duo, facing up against something that's been such a strong duo overall for such a long time, really, in this Lucian Nami. Ever since Tidecaller's Blessing has been able to affect spells, and Lucian has got the empowerment off of his passive, it's just become such a deadly duo to become oppressive within the bot side. And EOD with this Yone has the ability to scale really well and take over, but not to the level that this Cassidy has. Yeah. I mean, Wait they're not worried second. about the Caitlyn. They're not worried about the Caitlyn because you know, you know why? They didn't, they banned Varys, they banned Ezreal, but the Caitlyn's still there. So I had my power out for a bit while draft was going. I just now noticed they have a Cassidy and an Ari. Yeah. Is this Ari top? That's Cassidy top. All right then. That's... I have not seen I have not seen Cassante jungle in a while. I haven't man. either. I didn't even realize that either. Oh, That's man. a very much a big change. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. The draft. Um. Maybe they know something we don't. I could see, here's what I could see. I could see the Cho'Gath coming in and just using his, his alt to get rid of the Cassante once he's ulted. 
I could see the the Kassadin being used as kind of just a, a handshake for the Cho'Gath scaling. You know, they they had to opt into the Ari to counter the mobility of Yone. They were trying to do something tricky and they ended up with the uh, Kasante jungle. He's from the jungles. You've seen yeah. his story. I mean, he's war. good. He's fine. He's the literal embodiment of a monster hunter. He'll be yes, fine in the jungle. Exactly. Everybody knows Kasante can jungle. These guys know that Kasante can jungle. What are you talking about? Not even Absolutely. something to be worried about. Not even worried. So I have no clue how this, like, the Kasante jungle cassid and top will work out for the side of USP. But EOD has a lot more standard of an idea of where things are going. Yeah. With the Cho'Gath top, their standard top side tank. Wukong, your bruiser engage, Yone, the mid lane damage assassin with a enchanter support and a long range damage AD carry. Very standard from EOD. EOD's really gonna be looking to push that advantage in lane from Caitlyn Karma to try and get some early plate pressure and really just sweep up as many turret plates as they can get. But yeah. I do like what the side of USP has, even if I'm a little confused how a Cassidy or Ari tops. Me too. Work. It's fine. They're very short range if you if you look at it, right? Like all those champions, they they have the range that they do because of their dashes. Like that's what they're that's what they rely on. So to see that and then to see the Wukong on the other side, that's just thrilled. If you know they're they're close to him and he can get on top of them and use it, those ults to be very disruptive. You know that's probably going to be one of their biggest avenues to go for a win. The other side of it is just making sure that Nami Lucian doesn't get going, you know? Everybody loses in 25 minutes to the Nami Lucian. Uh, especially with the AD, AD carry changes this last patch. That's what they're going to be looking to avoid. They don't want to see the the end that happened to... Uh, I think it was... There was somebody over in LA, LCK. Literally lost after Lucian hit two items. That so. sounds like a lot of different teams you can describe right there. Yeah, yeah, true. It was this week, though, so that might narrow it down. Yeah, now you're down to, like, four teams. Eh. Man, uh, as what, what, la what lane do you play, Bickle? I never asked I am that. a support main. So, uh, you are a support main? Okay, I am a support main. main. All so right, we got so bot I'd... lane covered. Yeah, we're good to go. Just we're don't just pay gonna... attention to anything else. Just keep the camera we're, there. We're <laughs> only going to talk about bot lane after this game. Just want to let you guys know. Absolutely. Our, uh, caster, caster, play by play, no? That's it. That's all we're going to talk about. Yeah, MVP. absolutely. Uh, it's going to be one of the top. Lines. Hari top? We don't care. We're gonna that doesn't affect the, the game. Lucian Nami. That's what you we think, love. You think jungle affects the game these days? Are you kidding me? Weakest role. All right. And one thing to, that we do have to note, Caitlyn, with this recent AD carry change, with the 40% IE coming in, very much hits that mid lane power spike, that mid game power spike a lot earlier. Can really become oppressive with those headshots. And yeah. Lucian, such a good user of Nabori. All right. We're going to have a ton of fun here going into this game. Uh, passing it back over to our lovely uh, play by play. Have fun in this game, guys. We'll see you guys when we get back. And uh, welcome everyone back to the Summoner's Rift. How was how how was how was like uh, analysis? You think uh, DBZ freak? Well, with it, I'm pretty uh, pretty chill about it. And right now, it's like we're trying to get into this game and uh, going forward, we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. You know, as we're going, uh, I'm not sure what could happen. We're just gonna have to wait and see what happens, which is kind of weird. I've got to admit. Yeah. Hmm. No, I'm. Uh, I am super curious how this game will turn out. Uh, I am expecting some heavy violence within the bot lane, and then everything else is, uh, you know, uh, fairly typical. So. Yeah. So I'm not expecting anything too funky because there's really no like invade presence where like that can really happen here. There's not a like a ton of CC you can get off. I mean, I guess on blue no, side you could do Ari Charm in the bubble, maybe a little so. Cassante CC, maybe you get a kill. Other than that, uh, I just kind of expect you know a whole lot of nothing and a little bit of cheekiness coming in from the from the Nami. Oh, what's she doing? Just fiddling around there. Look at them just 
just having a little bit of fun. Oh, hey, wait. You, you wait, I have, have to, man, I have to flame. So uh, this guy over here. <laughs> no, nah, I, mean, I mean, it's okay to flame him. I mean, he, he, you know, finished like gold four, like a real scrub, you know, so. <laughs> um, so right now, here we go. So junglers are starting on opposite sides of the map. Cassante starting top side, Wukong starting blue side. Blue side pretty is the pretty expected start for the Wukong. Cassante, I do not have any form of analytical opinion on how that will go. Also, I just realized this is a Cho'Gath mid. So this will be a very interesting matchup, methinks. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the change makes sense because uh, Yone just has a much better time into the uh, Kasdan uh, yeah. than the Cho'Gath would. Uh, Cho'Gath just kind of gives the free... Uh, it, it's like a free lane over to the Kasdan, so uh, it's probably a really good idea that it's swapped. Oh, well, I thought Great Power was actually under tower there, but I guess he was just barely out of the range to avoid taking a tower shot there. Here we go, with level 2's now hitting here in the bot lane. I guess not really much will come out of it. At this point, I mean, I mean if I was playing Lucian, I'd want to make sure the lane is pushing more towards us, so that way when we hit level 2, we can force a fight early and try to get all that damage off as hard as we can. But, I mean, I, I, I like the idea of him kind of, kind of chilling and, oh goodness, a good trap. That was a lot of damage, actually. Ooh. Oh yeah, uh, Matt, Matt, uh, Matt, getting getting a little screwed over there with the the damage he just took. Oh yeah, that's for sure. But here we go. Ooh, a little bit of a knockup onto Haru there. She will get silence, but she'll just W L and take a little bit of trade damage. Now let's see. We go across the runes here, so they're pretty standard over the, over across each of the team. So Matt did go with the electrocute uh, on this on, for this game. Good for him, honestly. I mean, just to try to get that extra bit of burst damage that it can um, come out with the Nami. Goodness, Miss Yon is probably gonna be a problem for a little bit. And I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you more and more as we're like watching this that Yone is just gonna have the advantage until Cassidy hits six. But other than that, I mean, there's not much you can do. Just now, upon light, just gonna have to farm under tower try to like stabilize the lane in some way. But he will recall beat down a little bit of CS. He's down a lot of bit of CS actually. ACS is kind of big this early in the game. We're just gonna. Cassidy's Cassidy's sole focus uh, this early in the game is just trying to survive. <laughs> don't uh, die. And then yeah, don't die. Uh, and it, I mean, yeah, this Cassidy's just kind of gonna AFK do whatever he wants. Uh, Should have. I think he should have backed. I think he missed a good back timing here to actually buy and uh, match some of the items. Not that I think he'll be losing lane now, but. Right. You gotta you gotta find good times to go buy whenever you can. I agree. Cause I'll take here in the mid lane. Ooh. Probably not gonna be looked out of it. But we have a trade in the top side actually. Uh, but okay. Cho'Gath, or sorry, the Wukong was close by, so Ione felt protected and safe to just walk up and do whatever he wants. Although, looks like the Ione may have overstepped, gets out of there, and uh, doesn't give over the first blood to the the Cassidy. I wonder if Cassidy flashes on him. Uh, maybe after this third Q? Oh, never mind. He hit the third Q, so it's, it's a little scary now. No, yeah, it's definitely a little bit scary at this point now. He's running low, has no pots. Neither of them really have pots, and with that Doran Shield start coming in for the Yone, he will have the advantage. But back to this bot lane in the meantime, they're just chilling, playing Farmville. A little bit of poke damage on, they will naturally happen, because Karma, that's just how she is. I do enjoy when Karmas do play on the more aggressive side. It kind of shows that, like, we're trying to brute force you down to, like, force an advantage into our lane. And as you can see, as, uh, as Tempest is slowly pulling ahead, just very ever so slightly pulling ahead being able to get that lead kind of like forcing the solution into a little bit of a weird awkward back foot and that's why I, i'm glad that like they picked the karma into this lane and we're in a really weird spot at the moment okay good bubble good bubble not much will come out of that so five minutes in the first drake is up and neither jungler is really on the, really interested in getting it if uh well out of curiosity what lane do you play oh i play adc support okay uh, so this this bot lane is my specialty here Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, let's say you're down here, it's five minutes. Would you want your jungler to start prioritizing the Drake? Would you want to try to force the, it, your enemy bot lane to back for this dragon? Uh, absolutely, 100%. Uh, just especially with how strong souls are. Uh, and since both teams should be looking to play around this bot lane, that's where the, the early point of contention should be for both sides. Uh, any one gank could actually just turn this entire lane into the biggest snowball uh and then just kind of take over the game from there uh so i i mean yes i i would love to be playing around bot lane right now okay yeah fair enough 
I think that's what they should end up doing too. And I'm actually surprised about the state of the farming in the jungle right now. They're they're both even at the moment, but the, this looks like EOT's bot lane will get the reset first unless they're walking up to Dragon. Cassante is down here as well. I know directed camera says mid lane's more important, but I mildly disagree as we have a little bit of nonsense getting ready to happen in the jungle. But I think that's just the dragon that's gonna end up being taken over. Yep, I would be correct. Yep, they get the they get the fast rotate over to the dragon and then Lucianami's just kinda stuck under tower trying to catch up and farm. I mean they're about a wave, wave and a half down. So they're they're saying, hey, let's get there. Uh, Ari going in, uh, kind of wasting all alt charges and flash uh, just to die anyways. Caitlyn decides to burn the flash too. It's kind of a flash party here. Uh, don't mind us. We're just having a good time. You know what? I respect it. I respect the attempt. <laughs> I I think the communication there was see how many people are on it. See if you can stall. Just if anything can happen out of that, but unfortunately, not many, many of your teammates were there, and the bot lane didn't roam over as well, so very unlucky for the mid laner, and Caitlyn also gets the first blood in that situation as well, which will accelerate this bot lane to be able to do more and more of that late game damage that they're going to need. I mean, besides Yone also doing really absurd amounts of damage, you're okay. You're, you're perfectly content with Caitlyn getting that first blood. Oh yeah, absolutely. I just don't think it needed to burn summoners to do it. Uh, we do have the Cassante going in on the Yone. Yoning having to burn Flash away from Cassante, oh. but it's uh, too little, too late. Cassidy ends up picking up the kill, uh, and that's that's a nice little gold intake to the Cassidy to mm -hmm. to help catch up uh, after being all, about 20 CS down. Yeah, and the best part is uh, Yone does not have TP. He can clear this wave, force it into tower, and just make Yone get in a really weird spot of losing a bunch of CS. Now, it really doesn't matter because he's still up 14 CS, but still that first blood, or not first blood, that, that kill is, will actually uh, benefit them in the long run. I'm going to tick over to the gold right now. A little bit of trading in the bot lane in the meantime. So, yeah, that puts Cassidy up like 90 gold, so he's ahead. That's a lot of damage on the, on the Darter Wolf. Ooh, yeah. yeah, no, uh, Darter Wolf and Matt kind of kind of getting the Caitlyn Karma experience. Wow, uh, we gotta they can't do anything. Lane. We do have Wukong going in mid lane, popping the ulti on the Ari, and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just... Munch. There's, there's nothing you can do. Uh, Ari uh, has... Yeah. A it has a super hard time in anyone with any significant amount of health, and Cho'Gath just sustains so much that Ari, Ari just tickles Cho'Gath. Uh, yeah. Is never really going to have pressure. Karma flashing oh. forward, Lucian flashing away, and then Matt with the uh, well-timed wave that didn't hit anything. <laughs> it was a, a really good ulti. Uh, honestly... Uh, these LCS supports should take notes because uh, Matt knows what to do on Nami. Speaking of the LCS, last night I looked at it, TSM was losing to 100 Thieves. That's going are well. We giving, are we giving live play-by-play -play updates for LCS now? I just, <laughs> Is that that, what we're doing? That's something I would do during uh, during draft last year because like it was during Worlds and Worlds would be going on and I would just oh, randomly okay. give them live updates when things were going on and Ooh. it was, was kind of nice. Uh, we do have Yone going in, going for a, a significant trade onto the Cassidy. I don't think oh Cassidy is too scared yet, but uh, should be getting ready to go back and just kind of TP back to win. Oh, he does have TP right now, doesn't he? Okay, yep. So he will use that TP, be back up here. Actually, I don't think he should TP because it kind of looks like they're either looking to shove this lane in to give Yone a reset, or they're going to summon the Rift Herald, which is even worse. So that will get a free charge into the tower and very possibly... Wukong does not have ult, so yeah, they just should just back off here. Yeah, uh, both both top and jungle were uh, down ulti, so it wasn't much they could do. Uh, Yone taking, I think, an unnecessary trade. Yone could have maybe stayed out, yeah. um, but regardless, he uh, he makes a trade, has to back because otherwise he uh, has the chance of dying. Uh, Kassadin mm -hmm. doesn't look like he's gonna f punish the Yone for backing them, uh, and it'll probably just end up being net neutral. I agree, and uh, I guess uh, I looked away too soon because the uh, the the Hunter Thieves uh, TSM game loss uh, was over, and it looks like a Hunter Thieves won. Imagine that. The Are boomers you spoiling? Have Are you spoiling my game? It does look like Acid is getting ganked here. Can't do much to get away from Wukong uh, because he hit the one component power spike that is Caulfield's hammer. Uh, and honestly, there's just not much you could do, right? You, no, I didn't your have Your opponent flash. spends 1,100 gold, and then you just lose the game. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like just too, I think too many ulti stacks at that point didn't have flash. And I'm going to circle back and say, yes, I will spoil the LCS because double monitor life is best life. Uh, we do have uh, the Nami wave we coming go. in clutch. Uh, Cassante and Ari down here. Uh, Cassante taking that kill, and uh, this Karma should be cleaned up here. Just to get one of these at least. Oh, actually, actually oh. it's away. Surprisingly, I expected uh, more pressure onto the Karma. I honestly did too. I mean, while I was BMing all of Twitch chat in here, and uh, all of a sudden they were like, "We're gonna four man play this," and. Looks like Ari will take a little bit of a tower shot there, but she does not die, so good for her. Karma was a little cheeky. She might have gotten it, but I think they're just going to sack this top lane, which I don't think is ideal with how far ahead this Yone already is. Yeah, 200 gold right now, and him getting that first turret bonus will just accelerate his lead, just like that. He's up almost 1,000. Uh, oh, man, I I love to see the, the oh, Chogath plays. Uh, Kasten is getting jumped on by Wukong and Chogath. Uh, they do have to be careful of this fight, though. Kasten is out of mana, uh, but they just have the numbers advantage. Uh, they don't looks like, this. It looks like it won't amount to anything. There really wasn't any ultis up. I was kind of curious if they would try and fight that. Uh, in the meanwhile, <laughs> uh, Yone just pushing out top lane, kind of... You know, securing a tower, uh, being sure his team just remains up in gold while uh, while the rest of his team just collects that second dragon. Yes, the dragon falls here that kind of, you know, they're up, up almost 5k gold right now, but just with those two dragons, it makes it seem a little bigger than it is. And Ban up here, just free farming. That's something you don't want to do, because this Yone could become a potential problem, where he'll just press R, you know, press face roll on his keyboard, and just everyone dies pretty much immediately. You look at the reset, though, and I was about to say this should be the shield bow gold that he has right now, and he finishes that and you're now on on track to having a really obnoxious um, top laner imagine that yeah so this this yone i mean this is how the lane probably should go yone versus cassadin uh cassadin yeah. is not too terribly far behind cassadin just needs to hit that the second maybe third item to actually have the full impact uh the, the big problem lane. is that, that uh matt's team here has given up a total of 13 plates. Wow. 13 plates. And plates are just now falling as a result of the 14 minute mark of being crossed. Ooh, good sidestep by now upon lane. Objective bunnies are already activating 14 minutes into the game. This is a lot, but here we go fighting. Uh, yeah, we do have Kassadin getting jumped on. Wukong flashing in with the ulti. Because oh they having to flash away. Ari maybe having, uh, getting killed here by the Caitlyn. Uh, Yone ends up Q3ing and getting the kill. She doesn't uh, trade. While the, uh, the bot lane here on Matt has to kind of play careful. Caitlyn get, feeling himself a little too much. But uh, oh. everything ends up soliding out and uh, going back to normal while... Uh, Cole's team here gets the mid tower, completing their collection of all outer turrets. Ends up being a two for nothing there. They just don't have the damage right now to really fight the way that they want to. It looked good for a moment, but just I think it was on a combination of summoner advantage, or not really just summoner advantage. I guess just item advantage. That's all that really was, and just eight thousand gold down at almost eh, about seven now. Seven thousand gold down at this point in the game is just too far. But I mean, you got to give it to them. They're, they're, they're playing their hearts out, and it seems like it's just slow and steady wins the race for Cole's team, while on the other hand, like, you have a USP that's just, like, trying to dial it back, or, like, trying to get some items, be able to take control. Lucian finishing his Gale Force is actually huge here. Cassidin, on the other side, has the Roa and almost a tier stack, so once he finishes that, that will actually be, a, like, a good start to start oh, running no. through. And I think he's I'm... in trouble, and we were thinking the same thing, but I think he might evade... So I'm I'm scared right now. I, this this Lucian has a dagger in his inventory, uh, and there is no second item right now that Lucian should be building with the dagger. Uh, there's a there's the build going around. The popular build is Gale Force uh, Rapid Fire. Uh, that Greaves. build. Uh, you don't you don't build Berserker Greaves on Lucian. If you're building Berserker Greaves on Lucian, you're wrong. Uh, don't do that. I will take your word for it. You need to be building pretty much flat AD. Uh, especially with the ADC change, uh, you want to be building into that IE or Navori second. Uh, you just have this huge spike in damage, especially with the Nami amping you. Uh, you're, you're just missing out on damage. Uh, 
doing it any other way. Uh, and especially this game, they need all the damage they can get. Every little bit matters. Uh, it does look like Ari is getting jumped oh, on by the no. Yone, and Yone does Yone things. Uh, very hard champion indeed. I, yeah, I have a friend who says I don't know how people can uh, play that smooth brain champion, and I'm like, oh, you just insulted a lot of players right there, because he also means Yasuo players too in that category. Looks like... CJ will catch out the Yone. No, he's not even going to fight him. He's three levels down, actually. He can't fight him and might have an inkling that Wukong's somewhere in the area. And then kind of sniff out a weird play, but here we go. We're fighting. No, we're not fighting. We're just trading a little bit, trading back some damage, just farming up. The next dragon is up in 54 seconds. Uh, I think this is definitely an easy soul point for them. This, I don't think there's a universe where uh, USP can fight them, so this should not last too much longer, no, uh, to be honest. It, uh, honestly, uh, they get this Mountain Drake, they just become so much tankier uh, due to the uh, dragon passive. Uh, and on some, with, with, you know, Cho'Gath and then the shield bow on Yone, uh, they just, they're becoming impossibly hard to kill. Uh, yeah. Wukong popping this Rift Herald mid just to further oh, push. Uh, okay. I don't think anything will come from that wave or the CJ on the side. They're just kind of trying to get some poke in. It's just impossible with how far behind they are. I agree, and here we go. We're now reaching the 18 minute mark. The Dragon's soul point. Oh, no. oh my god. Uh, yeah, we... <laughs> We had a had a huge engage by the Yone. Uh, he barely misses out on a couple kills. They end up getting consolation prize of the Ari and Cassidy uh, on the side, uh, and then go and pick up their uh, winner's prize of the dragon. Yeah, and they I was gonna say they saved the Choi at all, but never mind. They used it at some point during that. So originally they were gonna save it for that dragon specifically, but they just changed their mind, went for the fight, and they was like, yeah, we got this anyways, and. They're just beating him with their wallets. Their 9k gold up. I think the gold lead will just continue to spike. Now, will this end? All right. We're going to do an over under. Will this game end in over 25 minutes or under 25 minutes? What do you under, think? Under. That's going to be under. All right. Let's decrease the number. Over 23 minutes or under 23 minutes? Oh. Uh, uh. I think, I think uh, that Cole's team has the potential to close it out in under 23, but I don't think they will. Uh, I think they're going to have to maybe rely on this Baron to close it out, and then um, they'll get it at, like, the 22-minute mark, and then they'll close it out shortly after, but just after 23 minutes. Okay, well, let's, uh, we'll, we'll keep it to that. If we could do a fun little prediction, be like uh, 23 minutes over or under. But all right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, the uh, so I will say it is unfortunate to be Ari right now. Still, twenty minutes in, not have a complete item. Uh, Cassidy not at two items yet. Hasn't fully scaled right. up the Rod of Ages either. Uh, and then you have you have Cole's team already prepping around this this Baron. So it's. It's becoming harder and harder uh, to even get the vision required to contest it, let alone Yeah, I'm toggling my vision right anything. now at the moment, and it's pretty much completely dark on their side of the jungle. There's really just that one ward that you just placed at their blue buff, but they just walk in the river. They have Cho'Gath all here, and they could just do it if they wanted to. I think they're going to try and bait them in. Wukong did back a little bit ago. so They do have the ward in the river, so they know Yone is here uh, towards the top side. So they haven't started it yet. Uh, they don't have not spotted Wukong. Uh, they need to be careful of any potential flanks because they don't have a ward uh, to watch any flanks. Oh boy, and this is looking really dicey at the moment. They just can't walk in anywhere because like it's just it's a choke point. Here we go, we're fighting. So it does look like Cho'Gath is uh, getting a little bit engaged on. Yone misses a very crucial ult, uh, and there isn't much going on. Wukong getting a huge ulti though onto wow. the Lucian. Flashes in, gets another double knock up, and then they're just kind of uh, just AFK clicking in. Uh, it's 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 so hard to win. I think that fight went about about as well as it could, and it, it still just wasn't enough. Uh, looks like they're gonna pick up this dragon uh, a little earlier than I anticipated, about 21, 21 and a half minutes. Yep, Baron goes over. It is a full clean ace. All they burned was a couple flashes and an exhaust, but other than that, that was it. Cho'Gath was also burning that as well, but they're just so far ahead, it didn't even matter. Baron will fall here. Boom, easy peasy. That inhibitor should fall very shortly. Uh... 
Yep, let's go to that side of the map, or not. Yep, that tower has now fall, fall, fall. There we go. Now the tower has fallen. They were trying to bait me there for a second, but they will get their resets in, spend some of this cash, get more of these items, and uh, I think we have one more fight in our hands, if I'm being honest. Uh, hey, do, you, do we call it a fight anymore, or is it a slaughter? I uh, it's, it's, it's not really much of a fight when it doesn't matter what you do, you just kind of lose. Uh, they don't have, they're outmatching items. Almost every single member of Cole's team has two items. Whereas we have a mid laner that doesn't even have a complete mythic yet. Uh, Wukong is ready and able to kill this Kasante. Uh, already popped ulti to help secure this red buff. Uh, is ready to jump back in and uh, try and kill him even harder. Uh, ha Wukong has the rest of his team following up. Caitlyn ulti in there and uh, Wukong just kind oh, of doing his own he thing. killed him. Uh, Ari, Ari's dead. Uh, I'm sorry to say you're more of a minion. Yone with huge two-man ulti on the bot lane, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a slaughter. Well, we got 30 seconds. Come on. Over or under? Let's do this. Come on, Cole. Over or under? Nah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be, uh, just over 23, I think. Uh, they're gonna get distracted and kill the Kastin, so that's uh, that's where the 23 minutes comes in. Oh uh, yeah, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. He goes ahead and dies a clean ace, and uh, EOD will take the series. No, I guess I guess right. that was a little. Come on, come on, there. five more. Oh, three. A little off, a little off. In 23 uh, minutes, the game ends, which is actually really I'll awesome. say I was I was really close with my estimate. Regardless, uh, EOD just coming out on top with a, a really nice draft uh, and kind of just playing to the strengths of it. Uh, we can go ahead and pass it over to our analysts, uh, and they can go over that game while we get ready for the next draft. All right. See you after that. Well, that was a bit of a different kind of game. A little bit of a slaughter. Uh, these these teams are relatively well matched when you go and look at their OPs. I will say, uh, red side they had some interesting things that were very different from how blue side played this. Uh, so one thing I want to bring up is the fact that we're looking at a. 13k gold lead by 22 minutes. 13k gold lead by almost the end of that game. How do you how do you come back after that? Uh for for our blue side friends over here. If you're talking about next game in draft, you throw whatever plan you had going in out the window and change it up. Because whatever you were thinking did not work. The did. Ari mid lane was not that successful for them. The pivot to the Cho'Gath mid by Cole's squad just threw them for a loop, it felt like. The Yone piloted really well up topside and played well into the Cassidy. And Cole on that Wukong was able to get some great advantages. But really, you need to look at the bot lane of Temps and Dehaz, who were able to pressure that Caitlyn Karma and just grab so many plates. I think, if I'm remembering right, uh, Cole's squad managed to grab 13 of the 15 plates by the time plates fell at 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. That is insanity. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of it's going to be played off that Caitlyn. You know, she's able to, to siege very easily. Uh, I will say that even though they were incredibly far ahead... And they had a ward above them uh, in that river bush for their lane. They still did get collapsed on by not just the jungler, but also the mid laner, Haru, who came down. Mid laner for red side didn't even look like he had he had mentioned it. His poor teammates in bot lane just getting ganked for free. <laughs> and and so maybe that's the avenue back in. You know, you, you let them have that pushing bot lane and to do those rotates down there to try and shut them down, to try and get yourself some kills. Because that was pretty much the only play that really went well for Blue Side. That, that, that entire game, game was when the mid laner and the jungler came down for that game. game. You know, you need uh, to punish overextensions. Yeah. And something else for the side of Blue, I like flair and draft. I like kind of putting your own spin on something. Cassid and top just wasn't it for me. If you're going to go Cassidy, you stick them in the mid lane. 
against something that's a bit more mage. Gollum, you finally have a video camera. Do You're live. Really? That's Welcome. fantastic. <laughs> I look horrible. We'll, we'll go with it. Um, actually, I was going to ask you that. So, so with the the Ari going to the Cho'gath, you know, she's looking at six deaths by twenty minutes. Six deaths on Ari into a Cho'gath. That looks terrible. You know, that's a range in a melee matchup. He doesn't have any way to get really on top of you unless he lands that knockup. If he pressures you enough, you can always just back off the lane, you know, go from it from there. But like six deaths is too much. That's that's at the point where my teammates would be telling me that I am completely flaming them, that I'm completely just trolling them. Uh, would the Yone matchup have been better? Would Ari have done better into Yone than Cho'Gath? I guess that's the big question. I don't think so. But I think that Cassidy would have done better into Cho'Gath than he did into Yo. Which is why I think the pivot was there to begin with. Yeah. It just worked out really well with the pivot to send in the Cho'Gath mid to match up against the Ari and sent Yone into the Cassidy, which was the main focus to be that counter pick. As they mm -hmm. tried to focus away the two main threats of Grey by banning them out, but then he just goes into the Yone and says, You thought you could blind the Cassidy? Not on my. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and, and you still you're, still, you're seeing, seeing champions like Scion in the mid lane these days. days. And, and so, so when they pick the show guy, I really like it because they did go Jack Show first on him. That, that makes, makes you this, this threat, threat in team, team fights, fights that you can't ignore. And it takes a lot of the pressure off the Caitlyn. It takes a lot of pressure off the Karma. They didn't end up using it too much just because you know as our uh, uh, casters were talking about, they were just smacking with their wallets by the end of the game. You know. Uh, but but in those team fights where you do have to rely on that synergy, uh, I, I love, love the, the idea, idea of using the Cho'Gath instead of the Scion. You know, it's not as much pushing power. It's it's not as much survivability because of Scion's W passive. But I I think it still fits that niche. So I really like it. Just to, even if that was the plan by them, hey, we're gonna take this Cho'Gath. We're actually gonna send it mid. You know, that Yon's gonna go top. You know, he's gonna live on the island. So the fact that they did that and they, they still, still opted, opted into giving game. now upon light that casted it. That just feels terrible. Because any advantage that they might have had is like, oh, we go the scaling pick top lane. That's a that's a scaling tank. You know, Castle will come online way before that tank is able to do anything. It negated all of that. So if that was part of their strategy and they said, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play that tank into the Cassadin, genius. I mean, I think that's wonderfully done. What, if, if that was it, intentional, great for them. If it wasn't intentional, happy accident. If it wasn't intentional, say it was. So you look like the biggest brain possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was totally intentional. Completely planned. I, I couldn't have imagined squad, it any other way. You're going to the next game trying to think up a changing draft. You probably want to give Haru something safe mid lane. But what's safer than an Ari that has three get out of jail free cards with her ultimate? I think you need something that's just going to play back and scale mid lane. And for that bot side, Lushinami had its moments. I'm wondering what else they're going to be able to pull out, though. I don't think the Cassante was the call in jungle. I think you may need something a bit more standard. In sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the OP.GG for Haru over here. It's looking real scarce other than the Velkaz and the Ari. Maybe we see the the match, match the, the tank, tank into tanking, tanking. Go, go that, that Zach, Zach mid, mid that's, that's gotten, gotten a lot of popularity. popularity but, uh, but uh, we're gonna take we're gonna it, over, take to it over to the pick and ban uh, uh, real, 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 real quick here and see if they take if any of the advice we put here in the stream. So let's let's hope so for them. Let's, let's hope for them. Fingers crossed. Yep. Yep. Well, welcome back. Uh, how you doing again, DBZ Freak? That was a that was an entertaining game one, uh, and I like to hear from our analysts. Uh, I will say, I just I just want some something aggressive. I want aggressive gameplay back and forth. I want a lot of fighting. And you just got to think about it. Like, the Cassante did not do well. They got to pick something that's more, like, standard, if that makes sense. Um, Any, anything that can actually just make plays. Uh, Cassante is a scaling champion more mm -hmm. so. Uh, he's good at skirmishing, not really good at 
you know, making stuff happen. And the rest of his team kind of needed a playmaker. Uh, so it, it, it just was really hard for them to really do much in that game. Yep. Well, either way, uh, that first game is over. Then maybe they know, like, okay, maybe we won't do that again. We'll pick something else to kind of go into it. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And draft should be starting here very shortly as we are getting into picks and bans for game two. EOD leads 1-0 right now in this series. Can USB pull it back so that we can get ourselves to a game three? Or will this be a nice clean sweep for tonight so we're pretty standard right now the zach is being banned the victor is banned again the samira banned once again i don't expect very too many of these bands to potentially change between usp and eod i could be wrong maybe they banned the yone this game or they banned the uh the wukong i mean it's it's like i've been seeing all in chat apparently cold is really good at wukong so it's like probably shouldn't leave that open yep there it is okay so there's <laughs> the, the wukong ban homeboy is now has to Figure out his life and be like, "Hey man, what else you going to play? What you doing, huh?" What you doing, I will man? say, reading reading the document covering all the teams and all the players, uh, there was one champion that that was listed for Cole, and it was literally just Wukong. So, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe he's pretty good on Wukong. I think it's a free game then, if that's the case. Mr. Cole has been banned. His one trick is banned. This should be free. But we have Ash as the first pick. Now, it could be either AD carry or support. It, we just don't know yet. It's, just, it's more popular in the support role at the moment, and given the current meta. What she'll do is she'll build Umbral Glaive first into a Mandate, and then pretty much just fire off as many arrows as she can as the game goes on. That's kind of like what standard is for Ash. And Siri is the pickup for USP. And, well, I guess if Yumi is open or Lulu, okay, yep, let's see Lulu or Lulu. Okay, so yeah. that's actually a really strong bot lane. And once again, Barris was, was left open this time. So I could see them picking it, and that would be Barris Ash bot lane. And that would be a pretty Honestly. disgusting layer of CC they could do. Honestly, Zeri Lulu is playing to scale up. Varus Ash playing to be just annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> could, this bot lane, honestly, I think it's going to be super boring to watch. I agree, and they're kind of they're kind of taking their time on this one. I don't know if the, okay, so they actually didn't end up blocking it. As they were hovering it for quite a while, and it's like, well, I mean, you already flashed it. They will ban it if you don't pick it here. So now at this point, it's like, all right, do we pick a jungler or a mid laner? I think you pick a jungler here. Yep. Okay. Just they're just flipping between. They're playing with our with our feelings at the moment. If you could just one of them. Hey, hey sad mummy, sad mummy boy. Come Spica on. Speaker did Come play on, this earlier. And popped off on it. So honestly, I would not be uh, okay. They're good. They went happy boy instead of sad boy. Uh, not that I hate Nunu Willump. Uh, yeah. It is the playmaker that is needed, uh, and it adds a lot of value with the uh, Varus Ash as well. It's just a lot of engaged potential uh, with those three in the first half. Uh, and I'm, I think they should just counter pick a jungler, uh, something to help match up into this Nunu and kind of help slow them down. I think so too. Um. We'll just have to wait and see what the final pick is. They're going with... What? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Haru does play Jin mid, so this is most likely going to be a Jin mid pick. Uh, she does play that, and so actually, uh, something to say, we were confused at first, but now it's like, oh, wait, nope. What do you mean I'm spoiling the LCS? It was the first game. You had two hours ago to watch it. That's not my fault. Also, you this isn't the first time he spoiled it. This is the second time. Why are we now making it a problem? I'm yeah, just and in reality, I spoiled <laughs> half of Worlds because no one was watching it, and they were here. So you're <laughs> welcome for me caring about it. You're not going to watch the rebroadcast in six hours, are you? I didn't think so. I don't know. I, I do go back and watch highlights. I, I will say I do that. Oh, yeah, okay, uh, well. Uh, we do see we do see some uh, some of the scaling champions uh, here getting banned out. Uh, Navia and Cassidy. Uh mm -hmm. Maybe uh, EOD doesn't know this is a Jin middle. Maybe they're just like, oh yeah, Cassidy's fine. Blah blah blah. Uh, I will say I don't like Jin into Nunu Varus Ash. It's a very immobile carry into a lot of engage. Uh, I have to see how it plays out. But but you know, good luck to Haru. <laughs> I think she'll be fine. I mean, Jin is one of her best picks that she plays. I have, um, I've played with her before, and she has told and told me and shown me like Jin is one of her, you know, one of her best picks. And Diana being locked right. in at the jungler, I do like that pick. That is a more aggressive pick than the last one. That's for and sure. with some engage, finally has mm -hmm. something that you can uh, uh, play make with. Uh, Diana can go in, of course, get the huge moonfall and. Uh, 
hopefully explode some people. Uh, that's that's what I want to see right now. Uh, it does look like Chokath's being covered, and Chokath's never going to die. Oh my I god. Think, I, I think that would be a good pick if they do take this mid again. I mean, Jin does negative damage to Chokath when he gets tanky, so, I mean, it works. It, it keeps Jin from being able to get out of control in the mid lane, and he just he just does no damage to tanks, really. I mean, he needs three and a half items to be able to do that. It might be maybe it might be two and a half now with the IE changes, but I haven't tested it out myself. But I, what I've been seeing is that a lot of AD carries get immensely strong after just two items now. So it is very possible that Jin maybe can do more damage now. And Swain being the last hover and locked okay, in. Okay. Yeah. These two go either way. It could be Cho'Gath or Sway. And the other guy, they're going to flex these two either way. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens when they're in game. And Nar is the final pick for the side of USP. I like Nar. I'm excited for this. So we're going to go ahead and let them go through draft and client. And what do you, do you like this draft from USP better than the first one? I like it better than the first one, but I also think EOD is doing much better in their draft than the first game. Uh, this is, this is a scary comp to be into. Uh, and Again, I'm I'm not envious of this Jin pick. Uh, it's very immobile into Swain lockdown, Nunu lockdown, Vara's ult, Ash ult, and Cho'Gath follow up. It's honestly there's there's no safe spot. No. Uh, besides spawn, maybe spawn is a good spot to be. I, I yeah, I mean it, it just is what it is. But we're going to go ahead and uh, get ourselves a little bit of a breather before we head into game two. But we're going to send it back to the analysts and tell us, lads, how you feeling about this draft coming in for game two. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Biggest question in my mind. They have a Jin. But they Not also a have a Zeri. They have a Jin mid. They have, the a, they have a Jin mid. Well... I mean, look what happened last time. The weird weird champ in the game ended up going all the way to top lane, so who knows? Exactly. Maybe that's who a Norman right and, and a Jin top lane with Hydra. You don't know with these teams. There's no consistency whatsoever. We'll have to wait and see, but as mentioned, Haru does play some Jin mid, so that would be my expectation as to where it's going. Yeah. I do like how things are a bit more standard all around. The one thing I will say is I do don't think Matt's squad is going to be able to touch the wave, considering they have their uh, Zeri Lulu into an Ash Varus. There is so much range out of Ash Varus that if you step anywhere, you're just going to get hit with a double hail of blades proc and lose about two thirds of your health instantly. Yeah. So most of the time, if you ever see the Zeri Lulu, literally they're just going to sit under the turret and pray to the to the their jungler that they're going to get ganked you know so a lot of this lulu has a lot of the pressure on this lulu is being able to get that vision warded up or at least understand the vision in the river so that her jungler can come down and help out right because they want the zeri to get a kill in the early game and if they do they're set they've already won the laning uh the other side on the bot lane it will depend on whether or not they go lethality they go on hit they go ap you know he's got three different fantastic options and so sometimes that can be about comfort sometimes people actually play for the strategy love to see probably a lethality build coming out of from them you know talk about them being able to harass as you mentioned if that is their game plan for the lane you know and they can uh, and they can actually capitalize on that advantage. I think that's just the best way to go. You know, I don't I'd know. Would very you much go, agree with do you. Do you want to go? Would you go lethality into their bot lane, or would you rather I, see him go on hit? I think you go lethality there because I think with that double poke style, you just put so much pressure onto the Zeri Lulu bot lane that you just don't let them step up. You have good poke throughout. And alongside the consistent team fighting of the Swain, you're going to have a good front line to just poke from behind. I can understand the argument if you want to go more on hit style with, say, that uh, Shield Bow or Kraken Slayer with a Rage Blade because you do only have some poke and a lot of AP damage. I think AP would be the wrong call there. You don't really have a lot of front line, so you don't need that tank burst that you have there. You have Coleslaw and are tied on this Cho'Gath and Nunu to be a massive, beefy front line for you that can engage. Mm -hmm. You just need to sit back and do damage. Yeah. Now, mind you, 
Lulu can turn any member that she wants either into a tank or into a super tank if they already are. So you look at the side, you look at blue side right now. How do they get through the tanks if he goes lethality? And I think that's the big question they're asking themselves is, do we need to opt for the, the on hit? And we just let the Ash poke to keep the Varus safe, right? And this allows him to also scale up with the damage that he's seeing on that opposing side, right? Like he can scale up with the Zera if he goes on hit. Uh, you know, he's scaling up with the, the fact that they do have two Marksmans, uh, which is going to be a lot more consistent damage compared to a Cho'Gath, a Swain, and a Nunu, right? Unless that Nunu goes full AP, I don't know his life, I don't know his, his values. Maybe he does. But I think for this game, if they want to play for the lane, if they want the Nunu to come bot lane a lot, I think that's when you go to the lethality build. And and if they want to play for later, if they don't want to rely on bot lane, you know, they want to wait till after six uh, and maybe get some get some leads for the the Cho'Gath pick, which went so well for them game one, right? Like that's where a lot of their team fights were played around. Then I could see him going on hit and playing a little bit slower in lane. Just something else to note, with the fact that you have that option for the Varus, he really does decide how you're going to play that lane. Yeah. Yeah, I think absolutely. with how things went last game and the advantage they were able to accrue, you can reliably go that poke Varus lethality build, rely on the Halo Blades on both sides, and just try and push your advantage. Because when you look at what Matt's squad has to do, their only engage is really a moonfall off of Diana or a big Meganar hop from now upon light. And I don't think that's a reliant reliable enough that you need that. You can just start these fights by poking away with the Varus and the Ash behind a big front. Line. Yeah. And I do yeah. agree. Cole's going to be looking to make a lot of action happen. down bot side. Yeah. You got a weird disparity between the Swain and how he wants to play the game and the bot lane. Right. So like, Diana's if if Swain Swain gets Diana on top of him, he's thrilled. He loves it. He's like, this is a great team fight. But if if the bot lane, if he goes if he goes lethality, I mean, they're they're completely cooked. And you have a Zeri, you have a Lulu behind that Diana and Gage. I don't know. I think this gives him a lot better of a chance. This uh this game. And you know, I think it's gonna be pretty violent. But we do need to swap to a a brief intermission while we figure out the spectate having some issues there so yeah i'm looking forward to this game and hearing what uh goes down with our play-by-play
the summoner's rift. Okay, we're 30 seconds in. Okay. 30 seconds until minions spawn. Just let us know when we're live, then. Uh, I think we can hear ourselves on stream now. Cool, 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 cool. And we are into the game. Oh boy, I am excited for this one. After that long delay of trying to get, figure out all the spectate stuff, you know, lead client being a being a little weird. Uh, Absolute piece of garbage. Uh, what do you mean? It's the best client in all of gaming ever, forever. Psych. Yeah. Say psych. <laughs> <laughs> psych. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we are. Game two. Swain pinging his ping because he said playing Yone at 200 ping was hard, even though he thought it's the most smooth brain champion I've ever seen, and he still played it pretty well. Your ping is no longer an excuse. Now, if he pops off on Swain, his ping is lying. He's just better than all of us. That's all that comes down to at the end of the day. Here we are. Or maybe Minute it's that Yone is a much easier champion than uh, right, so it's just he is. Yeah, okay, that's... Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 it could be that. Right, right. So, alright. Let's get it going. They walk down, oh. they might walk into a trap here. Zeri just AFK walking into the bush, having to flash and cleanse away. Uh, doesn't. I don't think a kill will happen here, but they're going to get some really nice damage. Oh, and then we have Nunu with a level 2 gank into the Jin. Uh, Jin's going to have to flash away, but I don't think Jin's going to be able to get away. Oh no. And uh, oh, there's no. first blood. Nice early gank. Uh, uh, but, uh, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't even think the Nunu would pull off a level 2 gank so, like that on a Nunu. But I mean, let's be real. I personally would not think about that. I wouldn't think Nunu would just come mid immediately after farming. I I expect him to be like from a Twitch, maybe a Sejuani, someone with like I don't know. Nunu level two ganking. This is this is the world we're in now. Pun lane here in the top lane, and a little Ooh. bit of chip damage on. I okay. think this matchup is better <clears throat> in the last one. It goes more Nars oh, yeah. and actually gives range advantage. But I mean, just later when Cho'Gath just starts getting like heavier and tankier and. I've never used that as a word to describe someone as tanky before. Heavier? That makes heavier. no sense. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he take gets it. bigger, so he does get heavier. Uh, I, agree. I agree with your analysis. Okay, okay, we'll take it then. Um, I will say, say that wow. Every, okay. all, all three lanes right now are uh, are kind of losing for Matt's team. They are they're getting a little pummeled right now with uh, the first blood going in favor of the Nunu. Uh, mid lane kill almost happened Flash, there. Uh, the, but then, uh, Nar, Nar's been hit by almost every single knockup that the Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath has thrown out. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not looking pretty right now for, uh, for Matt's team. Uh, it happened really again! Wow. A Nunu, not Nunu, Nar, like no HP, and Nunu's back mid. Yeah, it's it's kind of just a harassing thing. Like, oh yeah, uh, I I hope you didn't want to to play the game because he's gonna be mid lane the entire game. Oh yeah, and looks like Nar will buy the call here. Make sure to get that uh get that little bit of extra gold going. But I think flash four shot. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Oh no. Uh, we do have uh, the Varus really going in, uh, not charging Q long enough, not able to get the kill. Uh, and then Diana wasn't able to uh, actually pick up the Swain. Swain had to burn both summoners to get away. Yeah, so kind of unlucky. I mean, I would have gone for that play too if I was playing Jin, especially to even, I guess, she got the Dark Harvest proc, so it was worth it in the end. Three Dark Harvest procs so far. I'll keep track of that as we go on this game. But just just falling behind in farm in some of these lanes, like almost double, actually almost triple the farm coming in here in the bot lane from the Varus to the Zeri. And that's not what you want to see, especially if, since we all know Zeri to be the little Sonic the Hedgehog that she is when she gets her items going. And she just runs around and kills everybody. And I'm also very thoroughly convinced that Riot Games purposely took her abilities and was like, how can we make it really annoying in Valorant? And then they made Neon, so that's well, cool. So so the uh, the developer of both those characters uh, was Riot August. Uh, he d actually developed both characters in tandem. So yes, uh, they were the same character, basically. I, I, I almost said some not safe words <laughs> because this is a family-friendly stream, but gosh darn it, August. I will say, I will say, uh, 
Raya August, I think, puts out some great champions. Uh, Nar almost, almost just getting obliterated. Uh, we do have Nunu going in top lane. Uh, Diana should be here to be able to stop the Nunu uh, from getting onto the Nar. Although, Nunu is uh, just kind of walking on the Diana. And winning. And winning. What? Oh, no, 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 oh, no, oh, no, 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 no! Uh, he had blood in his uh, eyes, and I saw it. But I think if he had a little more health, I think that play is okay. But just the fact that that cloth armor making the difference for that Shogath just unfortunately falls, and a kill goes over to that really beefy front line that this team wants to have. And now they're up almost a thousand and a half golds. And man, that's actually so unlucky. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's it's very unlucky. I think he should have just continued to back. Uh, he's is sitting at like a hundred health, like optimally, maybe he trades with the minions. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard. Uh, Dang, Coley was DMing uh, and leaving the game. That's crazy. Uh, do have a a quick pause, real quick. Should hopefully be back. Uh, it says Coleslaw uh, reconnected already. Uh, and we are back into it. Easy, easy, quick pause. No issues here. Uh, well, it's not just... on our end, but apparently, according to Cole, it was because a Windows update randomly started going partway through. Oh, well, yeah, you know what? That's fair. Happens. Uh, now, on the state of all these lanes, uh, they're awful. They're bad. Uh, nothing good is happening this game right now. No, and we have a little bit of a pause to catch up with Spectator. This is another one of uh, Riot Games' really lovely features that happens, and we are back now. So I I agree with you. Just each every lane is down right now. Just even though Diana's up and farm, just that that kill gold gives Nunu the advantage, and it's just like okay, we need we need to formulate a game plan here because all of our lanes are losing. We need to figure out farm it out. On oh, no, oh my goodness, a lot of poke damage going on from the Varus. This Varus is going to start hurting, I think, and it's not going to be pretty when he does. So, uh, let me let me ask you a question real quick, because you're yeah. asking me if you... Uh, what's, what's a way to come back into this game for uh, for Matt's team here? I think they have to get their Mythics, because realistically, if they can keep this gold where it is, we have a fight in the top lane, actually, as Nar uses the Mega Nar ulti on the Cho'Gath. He is doing all this damage he can, but Cho'Gath will get the better of him if he has oh. that Luckily, he missed. Nar, Nar was able to dodge his first knockup of the his game. Sure. Oh, and two? Okay, okay. Looking, looking pretty good. Uh, not that there's really much kill pressure on the Cho'Gath right now, but... Man, two... Two two knocked or two dodged knockups in a row. It's kind of impressive. And it's done. All right, yeah, and there it goes. There we go. All right, back to normal. So now, as as you were asking me, oh no, oh no. Okay, never mind. I was like, he he wants to eat. He's going for it, but never mind. So back to what you were asking is how can they mitigate this game? And my advice is to they cannot let, or rather, my advice for them is do not let this gold lead get any further than it is because you know right now yeah it's a pretty big lead but like 10 minutes later it's not that much so if they can keep this gold lead consistent uh there is an avenue for them to come back into this game and as you know when they have to when um eod has two items then you know usp should at least be at one and a half to kind of keep uh, to keep up a good little bit of momentum and they are doing oh, something we do have diana talking. at this top lane going in on this cho'gath uh cho'gath kind of just not seeing the diana sitting on the ward uh in and the flesh. diana diana picking up a really easy kill for his nar uh, we do have an engagement on this mid lane go swain just kind of pressing all of his buttons and afk going in on the gin gin uh not having flash up for another few seconds can he get away it just no. came up Jin could not get away. I mean, the the flash literally just came up as yeah, as got hooked or uh, not hooked, but uh, snared for the last time. That was actually terribly unlucky, but I I do think uh, she lives there. If you know the flash is up just another second or two sooner, Nunu is just kind of patrolling this bot lane. Good old Cole doing what he does best, and an arrow. Flash. Ooh, and then the panic cleanse on top of it. I I, I can say I might have cleansed there too. It, it happens. The TP uh, got canceled as a result of that. Wait a second. Haru was in the middle of TPing for that, and with the arrow missing Darter, and it just hit her in base as she was TPing, so it cancels the TP. I'm actually watching it on stream right now. Yeah, it goes is, all the way. This is tragic. TPing. Oh this my tragic. god. I don't, I don't know. Everything is, everything's going wrong. I, I mean, oh my. 
That's actually so sad. No. Everything's just like down gold or, or down farm. It's almost double farm in, in some of these lanes, and it's uh, it's not looking good. I think that's why they lane swap here to kind of give themselves a better advantage. Because I think Nar does at where he's at right now does have the better um, the better chance against the Swain. Is not as far down, and Shogath, you know, obviously at the range disadvantage once again. Granted, he could kill the Jin if he wanted to. I mean, this is an 80 carry we're talking about. Yes. And if he gets hit by a knockup, it's hard. Uh, we do have Nar going in on the Swain. Swain popping ulti and Nar losing any capability to be able to kill the Jin or the uh, Swain. Uh, Nunu going in and just uh, just just making fun of the the Jin at this point. Uh, Swain. Uh, just casually 1v2ing as this Swain, as this uh, slightly reworked Swain has done uh, ever since the uh, ability changes came out. Yeah, gotta admit, um, Swain is a champion, that's for sure. Swain ever is a champion, before, yes. Yeah, ever since his little mini rework that they did right before Worlds, I believe it was, and they arguably made him a stronger champion, but here we go fighting again. All right, she's dead. Just like that. Uh, poor Matt. Poor Matt. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's kind of just brutal to watch. It's, nothing's going in the way of, of Matt's team here, and uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate. Yeah, Rift Hero does fall on the other side of the map. Uh, that will be used by Nunu probably in the mid lane, since that tower is pretty close to where uh, Rift Hero will take that tower fully out. Nunu is coming back up here again. Uh, I don't think this one will result in a kill. Just a little bit of damage. Or maybe it does. Uh, oh no, it does have flash. Does barely okay, get away. Diana going in. Maybe going to be able to pick up uh, this kill on the Cho'Gath. Uh, but the dodging, it's its too smooth. And oh my god, Cho'Gath gets away. What a... What a Dodge master, is that faker? Uh, now, we do have an engagement on the bottom side here uh, uh, of the Ash onto the Zeri, and then uh, Nar trying to chase down the Varus right now does look like he picks up the kill, and they get the two kills. Ooh, man, this is risky. Uh, and now, for the third engagement in a row, Swain uh, here to help protect the Nunu from this uh, this invading Diana. Diana trying oh, to get some damage here. off, but uh, yeah, right now Swain is too big to be able to do an Earth to... Oh. To be able to die, uh, Swain picking up the kill on the Jin, uh, but letting the Diana escape. I'm just gonna casually say, with Swain having that realize, you are never moving, but the hilariously, now upon light makes the call to take the dragon, they get the infernal, and it does stop any kind of like quick soul that might have been in like an idea, but it is cloud, so you're not really sweating too hard over it. I will admit, I do hear a lot that a lot of people do not really care that much about the cloud drake, and they really care about more about the other four. So in this case, I don't expect too much like hardcore dragon priority to be going over now. Nunu should be coming mid to drop this herald here and just break open this tower. They already got first tower in the bot lane from the Varus. I think it was solo gold onto him. So that's free money. You know, he finishes the... Oh, he's going on hit Varus. Okay, okay. So, so real quick, are you saying that uh, because Swain built rallies, the enemies will never move? Yes. Get out. <laughs> Leave <laughs> now. I don't know where that came what? from, but all right. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, that's uh, that's what Swain does. We make sure you never move. Oh my God. We even had our analyst come in from Purgatory to to get you on that one. That, that got to admit, that's how you know you got him real good with that one. Hey. So fourteen minutes in, almost seven k gold down, about six and a half, and a little less than six and a half, but still, objective bounties are now going oh. live. Fourteen minutes out of the game, just like last time, and we might have a fight here in the mid lane. Oh, we oh. do have Nunu going in. And this cleanse always burned a little early. Nunu uh, getting uh, ulted, but. Uh... So, so is the Diana. Diana, able, Diana no oh longer able to move. Chogath hitting a double knockup onto the bot lane. Uh, doesn't look like it matters too much. Uh, they may be able to chase down this Chogath for the kill. Okay. Uh, Nar has to flash away, and it, it's uh, it's just, it's so hard when you're down six thousand gold, seven thousand gold. Uh, it, there's just not much you can do. Now at this point, I mean, you just have to. 
It's just unfortunate because like the whole goal at this point, I think this is just for wave clear. Oh goodness, it's a good thing he doesn't have a Rylai's. Oh, no mana, no mana. Oh, there's the mana. Okay. Oh, wow. Unlucky. But um, it's just unlucky when you keep coming down this far, like, and the goalie just exp it just balloons more and more. It just kind of goes to show that the enemy team is a little more coordinated, and you're not able to really make plays that you want to. They are going to force everything they can because they have the wallets to do so. Like, we have second items maybe starting to come in here in the next couple of minutes for some of these players. Like, Sunfire was just finished. We got Mythics coming all over the place, and we only have one on the other side right now for the side of USP. I mean, it's just unlucky. I mean, just, you have to stall, play the game a little bit more, a little bit longer, and just get this going and like... Oh, oh no. No. No, oh, run away, no. Jerry! Jerry, run! Run! No! Ah! Why is Jerry got to die? Unlucky. I usually have a usually have a phrase that I say when Jogath is on the map and he's walking at me menacingly. I say he's about to eat my cheeks, and usually that's he's exactly about what to, happens. About to eat some cheeks, eat the booty like groceries. You know and what that's, I mean? That is Chogath's entire mo. That's his whole <laughs> kit. No other abilities, just eating some booty. That's all he does. This is a family friendly stream, by the way, in case anyone is wondering. Hey, it's fun. Yeah, it's it's fun. Oh no, she's getting dove on. No, no, this is just mean. This is this is uh, this counts as uh, cruel and unusual punishment, right? This is uh, a little brutal right now. Uh, yeah. Zero zero six zero sixty eight farm. Seventeen minutes into the game, it is. It's kind of not fair. Not they've been bullying her the whole game. Actually, uh. She's not been able to finish a complete item uh, in this entire series so far. Uh, within, if it was 23 minutes this last game, uh, it's almost been 40, or it's been 40 minutes of no complete item. We're going, so Swain has a Magi, he's just going to casually point that out. Now, yes, yes. we're going to go back to over under. Is this game going to be over? In 25 over over under 25 minutes. Uh, I don't see how this game could could go past. Uh, I'll I'll say I'll say 23 again. Okay. Okay. It, it ends about 23. I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll say under under 23. Under 23. Okay. So for yeah, now the next five and a half minutes. Let's go. We got a Swain all coming in. Oh my goodness. Swain all coming in, pushing the Swain into his team to to make sure he can you know, heal more. Swain happening. being able to get away. Uh, we do have the Diana ulti not able to do it. Oh no, Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath just, just yeah, he did flashing it. into the ulti. Uh, Zeri actually able to pick up the kill on the Swain on the backside. <laughs> Uh, Zeri kind of tried it, trying to kite it out, uh, but you're against you're against an Ash Nunu. It's kind of hard. Zeri going to the backside trying to oh pick up Mars, not doing anything, and uh, yeah, it's it's impossible. Uh, we do have Cho'Gath trying to get Matt, uh, but the turret turns out to be the mightiest ally of all. Yeah, the end of that play ends up being a three for one. Now the shutdown does go over to Zeri, which you are actually completely okay with that. That is a very important shutdown that has gone over. Will that matter in the grand scheme of things? Maybe not, but I mean, you, it's, I think it's a good confidence booster. It's like, okay, we can, you know, take out some of their members right now, but Swain doesn't have a mythic. I think when he finishes either his um, his, his rocket belt or his Leandries, let's be real, it's mostly going to be Leandries just because you don't want to die, and the extra burn is really obnoxious. But once he finishes that, I uh, you just you just not killing him like at all. Let's be completely real. I don't think there's really anyone on this team they could one shot except maybe the Ash. But that's assuming you can even get to her through all those slows. It's it's honestly just so hard. Swain Swain just doesn't need a mythic this game. Swain Swain could just like not get mythic until final item and be fine just because of how far ahead he is. Oh yeah, he, that's fair. He can really do whatever he wants. Just kind of yeah, it's fine. She's just tickling him. I'm watching her auto him right now. She's just tickling. Oh yes. Diana, Broda belting in and not being able to do much. It's oh, oh wait, no, oh wait. I, I really wanted to see Haru be able to complete an item, but but she picks up the uh, the shards, further delaying the first item completion. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. 
Uh, Ash actually getting caught out though. Diana being able to pick up uh, an easy kill, making the rest of the game 4v5. Although it doesn't matter because Swain counts as three people right now. Swain counts as three people. All right, and stacking that Magi is four stacks. We're going to keep a Magi stacker as the game goes on, which reminds me, speaking of stacks, let's find out how many Dark Harvest stacks she has. She has seven. Normally, if I was playing Dark Harvest Gym, which I usually do in mostly in ARAM, but at least at least in a game like this, I'd probably be aiming for like 10 or 10 to 12 stacks on Dark Harvest right now, but that's, you know, just my personal opinion. Dark Harvest is one of those runes that, like, when you're not winning, it's very, very hard to actually get it reliably. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's no reliable way to get it. I often uh, tend to go with Fleet Footwork, even on a Lethality build, just because, like, having having the heal and the extra move speed just allows me to to maneuver just a little bit better, which is, like, just biggest weakness. Honestly, yeah. Oh, good uh, arrow. You see some missed ulti. You have the arrow coming in. Uh, Lulu still stunned up, finally getting caught out. The bot lane is now dead just instantly. Uh, and they're kind of taking this game slow. It might actually go past 23 minutes. They just they don't have any shutdown. Uh, another shutdown for Zeri. Uh, maybe scary, maybe potentially. Uh, Zeri just needs another three items to be able to do enough damage to kill everyone. Yeah, um, uh, but it's 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 there. There's a potential for there's potential Zeri to, to do something. I'm just really curious as to what potentially could happen. We're going to have to wait and see. I mean, it will be a very long road for them to come back into this game. They're down 9,000 gold, just about. Uh, eight and a half, but like, yeah. They got a long road to climb, and it really starts also with these objectives. Like, this next dragon, they realistically have to fight, and Jogan oh. is getting caught here. And, and oh, Haru, did, Haru did finish an item, but we do have Ashio coming in on the Diana. Uh, doesn't look too bad for, uh, yeah, she Goodbye, was able Nard. to escape. Uh, Swain, Swain just permanently slowing everyone down, though. It just, it, it's so no hard. Swain here? Okay, winnable. Swain did die, lose out on 10 of the stacks. No uh, we're going to get some more back. Uh, but the rest of the team is just so far ahead. It's, it just doesn't matter. Again, you kill one Swain, but there's still four members left alive. It's, I don't even yeah, think great power. I don't hard. think Van even minds at the moment. She's like, yeah, this is fine. Just walk in, constantly so you guys just do the damage. But my man's lost the Magi stack. Still got two more after the fact. Or like four more, I think. Because uh, it's four when you get it. Wait. Okay, four when you get a kill, two for an assist. So lost all his stacks and then got four more instantly. So like, homeboy don't care. He's good with it. As long as he's doing damage. All right, 22 minutes. And uh, there's still, what, three more minutes as an opportunity? Yeah, yeah, just uh, just a little more time. Uh, I'm not expecting the game to go much longer. Uh, they're, they're at the stage where they could just right-click into the enemy and kind of just win. Uh, they're trying to be sure they aren't doing the Baron, but even if they are, you can't really contest because uh, you're just walking into Swain, Nunu, Cho'Gath. Uh, yeah. With a Varus Ash backline. <laughs> they have they have Chomp Smite on the Nunu. They have they, Choga they have. Eat. So like, there's no way they lose this, and they're not even on the other side of the map right now. They're gonna prioritize this dragon instead. Go for that kind of take away the soul point, which you know isn't bad. I mean, but it's something. It's getting back something. It's an objective bounty. Gets them a little bit of gold. Boom, there it goes. Cho'Gath, once again, using his ultimate to secure it. This dragon should fall in the meantime. It's at 4k, so this should be gone by the time they even get here. And just leave. Easy peasy. Boom. Run, my friends. Uh, don't get with the Ash Arrow. But we're going to fight here very shortly. Here's Swain. Oh, yeah, here's Swain slowing everyone down. Does have the stopwatch, so if he's in danger, he can't do that. Uh, Nunu going in, just kind of popping ult T as well. And uh... Yeah, this is pretty much how I expected the fight to go. Uh, there's just, there's just no real damage on the side of uh, uh, update stream package, and it's uh, looking pretty over right now. I think so. They have a wave. It's just the Lulu. She really can't do anything, and there's barren up minions as well. So this will be the end of the series. Um, yeah, two zero going to the side of EOD. Good for them. They're just gonna do a cheeky arrow into the base and Matt. No, they're still not being Matt. Matt. You're bullying not Matt. Matt. You're bullying no. Matt. Oh, Matt. Yeah, they didn't have to kill Matt there. Arrow <laughs> got a kill. Wow. Well, 
that's that. Uh, uh, I guess so. Uh, with that, the analyst will take over and try to break down what happened that game. Take it away, boys. Uh, break that clown fiesta down. Yeah, that's a rough one to watch, uh, especially after that first game. You know, we, we saw a massive lead going over to EOD in game one uh, for looking back at my notes. Um, 13K by 22 minutes. And for this game, it was around the same mark. We're looking at a 12K gold lead at 24 minutes. So not much difference. The I, more things change, the more they stay the same. I, I'm just I'm just trying to understand how they're able how they even had a chance back into this game. You know uh what was the gin pick? What no, no no well we can talk about the Zary, but but I wanna I wanna ask like uh, what was the gin pick for? What do you take uh, the gin pick for? Comfort. Comfort? Comfort. I'm gonna go with comfort. comfort. Well, that's all we I can, can think of. Well, we can go take a look at Haru. And we do see some games on the gin, but is that enough to take it mid lane? I don't because, know exactly. Because you're running into at least at least a Chogath Nunu Swain. I What I would want to see is if you are opting towards that, you take it as support or at least plan on using it for the bot lane. Because then you can say, oh, okay, this, this champ's going to be pretty useless against those massive tanks. Why don't we just swap it to support? Take somebody who can do a little bit more damage over time. You know, give yourself a better draft. Because if you take the Zeri, if you take the Lulu, you want to slow this game down. You want to be able to let them scale. You know, I think that was the, the lane that they could have used to win. You know, they were able to get some kills down there as well. Uh, a little bit more earlier in the game. That was the lane, lane to win if they are if they wanted to take this game. And yet you see Jin dying six, seven times in lane to the to Coleslaw coming in with a level two gank when they were both level one. And then even after the poor Jin went top lane, Coleslaw was still diving him under tower, making sure that they were not going to have a good game in the slightest. You just got to feel bad for him. Yeah, Matt's squad's comp was really reliant on that Zeri down bot lane. She did pick up some kills in the mid to late game, got some shutdowns. It just wasn't enough with how big a gap it was. Once again, the Cho'Gath became a massive frontliner that played really well in the side lane into Haru and into the Nar in particular, just whoever they were up against couldn't do anything about it. And Coleslaw was so impactful early game on that Nunu to snowball a lead. We did see in the end the on hit Varus with the hair with the hail of blades to pressure their lead even more. They use that range advantage bot side so much to their advantage to just mm. get themselves ahead. And in all honesty, every lane was winning. Coleslaw was dominating the jungle. Every person on the side of Cole's team was just ahead. Yeah. And and even with the play with the Ash, you know, Ash was planning on hitting somebody, hit somebody else, and now Jin's missing out on that farm on the top side. I mean, even plays like that kind of show just, I think 50% of this was, was unlucky, and then the other 50% of it was just straight up comp diff a lot of the time. Because, like, you look at, you look at Diana and you look at Nar. And they want to go in. They want to. They want to play for these team fights where they're getting five man grouped up for the benefit of, I guess, the Zeri. But with with that being the play, Zeri's still waiting until at least two or three items to be able to do that. And you have a Jin who's giving up four kills by eight minutes, by you know, by twelve minutes. So like, I I I wanted to see more out of uh Red Side's bot lane this game and we ended up looking more at that that mid matchup between the Jin and the the Swain and it was mostly due to Coleslaw. You know, Coleslaw was able to come in and focus that down. I think the Cho'Gath also did incredible. Uh so I mean out of this game who would you give it to for kind of the biggest influence for the series? I think it has to go to Coleslaw. He was influencing every lane he was in. Yes, 
the solo lanes and the bot lanes were all doing a tremendous job of getting themselves ahead and getting their own leads. But Coleslaw was just there to amplify those leads to make sure that even if the person in lane was trying to step up and come back a little bit, they didn't have that option. They just kind of took over the lane. It felt like with the comp that Matt squad had, they needed, if you were going to go that double marksman with a Lulu, you needed a beefier front line. You needed a more reliable tank. But as for something like the top lane, Gnar can work there, but they needed more reliable engage in front line than what they had on that squad there. It just didn't work out for them. And then it just allowed Cole and the rest of his squad to pick on this double marksman dude. Yeah, the the picking on double marksman is a, is a great way to put it, right? And even even later in the game, the Diana was still able to make plays on the Ash. The Ash and the Varus were dying. The Swain was dying in some of those team fights. He he sat on an hourglass, uh, or I'm sorry, a stopwatch in two fights where he could have used it in alt form, and he just chose not to. Maybe that's just him sensing, you know, my team's gonna win this no matter what if I die or not. But uh, in terms of Coleslaw being the most impactful person in this game. I'm actually, I want to give it to the, well, top laner for this game and the mid laner for last game, uh, the Cho'Gath one trick, it seems. He just had such an influence on these games. I'd, I'd love to pronounce your name correctly. I'm going to go for it. Good luck with that. R-Tibe, uh, R, no, no, r to bet heavy f There we go. r to bet heavy f I think that you deserve the most cre credit for this series. The Chogath plays were wonderful. Flawless you shut down whoever you're Absolutely leaning into. Flawless. I mean, just being able to take the Chogath mid or top and them not really having an answer to it as well kind of speaks to the power of you on that champion. So great, great time watching the series just for that. Just to watch the chomps. Yeah, absolutely. Cole's squad coming out in dominant fashion. They're really going to be a team to look out for as the rest of this draft league continues to move forward in the coming weeks. Yeah. Well, it was a good game. Uh, we had a good time with uh, each other and with our casters, but we're going to sign off for now, and hopefully we can see some better games in the future here. Absolutely. That's it for us here tonight. But tomorrow, as a reminder, we are back here on the same channel more games will be coming your way, but instead of being our draft league, you're going to be seeing action coming out of pre-made Rampage and pre-made Unstoppable. That will be at 7 p.m. EST. That is your next action here on Risen and Risen 2. And speaking of Risen 2, we're going to be heading over there for a bit of a raid, as I believe they're still going strong in their draft series.